about the Bible as a, as a divine dr- drama. I'm going to let you explain that a little bit because you have a different view than most people I think would look at it. We talk about the Bible being like as a, as a document, it's the word of God, it's infallible. We, we look to it, but you see it as a, as an opportunity, as a performance script. And again, I don't want to put words in your mouth and I'm going to mislabel something and I know you're going to correct it, but tell us a bit about how you see the word and how we are to, how to perform it, if you will. Yeah. Well, thanks for that. You know, we started off this conversation by my telling you about going to Sunday school and coming back with questions about the Bible to my mother, and she had to read it. At three years old, by the way? What were the questions you asked as a three-year-old? Well, look, three-year-olds ask really difficult questions, like how many eyes does God have? <laughs> so um all that to say is I, I have thought for years that uh if I'm a Christian, a follower of Jesus, I've got to be biblical. But there are so many followers of Jesus, and, and it just raised the question to my mind: what does it mean to be biblical? And that's mm-hmm. the question, by the way, that really kind of catapulted me into doing doctoral studies. I just didn't have a satisfactory answer to that question. What does it mean to be biblical? So I think views of scripture are really important. If we don't know what the Bible is, we we won't know how to use it rightly. Mm -hmm. And I've been influenced by C.S. Lewis, who says, you know, the first rule of interpretation is you have to know what kind of thing you're interpreting or dealing with. And I think he would say that applies to everything from corkscrews to cathedrals, as well as the biblical canon. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And in the canon, of course, we have many types of things, right? We have many kinds of literature. And so as a systematic theologian, I think I've tried very hard to do justice to the many forms of literature in the Bible and not treat it as if it were a geometry textbook, you know, simply with axioms, simply with principles, or even a handbook of information, you know, simply with with bits of data that I have to somehow collect and make sense of. There are theologians who approach the Bible uh, as, you know, a book of information that has to be collected and arranged properly. And there's a place for that, to be sure, But I think the Bible is more than just a handbook of information or even a a handbook of moral principles. So my starting point is I I see the Bible as human discourse and divine discourse. It's ultimately God's word. And it's more than information. That term discourse is key. Discourse. uh, It has to do with the use of words. So I would... I define discourse as, and this is what I think the Bible is, something somebody says to someone in some way for some purpose. And so to be biblical, I've got to do justice to every one of those phrases. Mm. Who's saying something? What are they saying? Um, How are they saying it? For what purpose are they saying it? I I have those questions in mind every time I read scripture. And and here's the other thing that I've discovered. Simply having a high view of scripture or a so-called high view of scripture does not guarantee right interpretation. Mm. That, when when I realized that, that was an aha moment for me. You know, no matter how high, no matter how many eyes I use to describe scripture, infallible, inspired, inerrant, no matter how many eyes, um, you know, that wasn't, that doesn't guarantee that I will read it rightly. Mm -hmm. And so that, that made me go back to the drawing board. So all that to say is, first, we have to decide what scripture is, then we are in a better position to begin responding to it. So now I'm getting to your question. (laughs) Uh, No. This is great. As, yeah, as to, as to what the Bible is. So I've said it's it's ultimately God's speech to his people about something, let's call it the gospel, uh, for some purpose, and let's call it communion. I think the Bible is God's speech to God's people, and 
it's about something, right? It's about what God is doing to create a people. Hmm. I think the whole Bible is about God's purpose to, to uh, have this human creature in his image, to have this creature form a people, a holy nation, a treasured possession. And there's all sorts of references throughout scripture to this purpose. But I think ultimately, the Bible is about God's building project. He wants to build a living temple, uh, a people, to be his dwelling place on earth. That's amazing. That's what the story is about. And, uh, but that means it's not about morality in the first instance. It's not simply about universal truth. It's a story. And uh, Jesus Christ is at the center of the story. And what we know about Jesus is that he is God's word, God's discourse, as it were, but God's discourse made flesh. And so the reason I like the idea of drama is that drama is story made flesh, right? That's what a drama is. It's, it's bodies acting out some story. And I do think that's what the Bible is about. Jesus' body is really important, the incarnation. And he acts out the climax of this story, right? In Christ and on the cross and through his resurrection and ascension and so on, he is creating this people that has always been God's intention. So this is very dramatic. As a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, I see myself as caught up in something incredibly dramatic. It's the story, well, it's the ultimate wedding story, the wedding of heaven and earth. Mm. How is that going to happen? What do I have to do to be part of that? And so, so the, every part of the Bible, I would argue, has to do in some way, direct or indirect, with that ultimate aim. Mm. So I, I see the Bible as a, well, there's it's, it's useful to use many metaphors. I, I use the metaphor of the map. The Bible itself uses the metaphor of the lamp, a light unto our path. But by and large, I see it as direction for Christians to walk <laughs> in a way that makes them children of light and in a way that glorifies God and in a way that allows us to be the body of Christ on earth. So I, I see the Bible as a as a kind of play script that is a you know a, a script for a theatrical play. And it's a uh, it's interesting. I mean it works on different levels. It tells us what God has already done in the past in Israel, in Christ. It tells us what God is doing now in us through the church. It tells us what God will do at the end of time to consummate his building project. And so in all these tenses and all these forms, the Bible is filling out for us this picture of this, well, we could call it a creation project. It's the story of, of God creating a people for himself to be his representatives here on earth. And the church is caught up in this story. So it's a very dynamic view. I, I see the Bible as giving us instruction, yes, but it's not just theoretical instruction. It's very practical instruction, how to be the people of God in this place, in this time, in this situation. It, every, you know, it's very dramatic. And again, by dramatic, I mean it's it requires our speech and action in response to God's speech and action. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, because I, I love this. I, I As I told you before, I, I've preached this. When, when you first introduced this concept and I first read about it in the drama of doctrine, I, I mean, I'm not a theologian in the sense that you are. I'm more that everyday theologian that you wrote about. But this idea of it not just being this, as I as I as I mentioned in the pre-show walkthrough, a divine book of whack-a-mole where you just whack people for being sinners and hit them over the head. And I've been in places where I've seen that, where yeah. the Bible was seen as the word of God. It was it was talked about as the word of God, but practically it was used as a means to control. 
rather than helping people understand how to live out the divine drama of redemption on the stage of the world so that the world might see the main player who's Jesus. Yes. And, and in seeing that, it's, it's so revolutionary because then you realize you're playing a part. You've been invited into this process. And it's not that you're, you are, you are passive in that you, God is the main player and he, but he invites you. You didn't invite yourself. He invites you onto that platform to, to show who he is through your life, through your action. And again, pointing it back to Jesus. That's why I think it's, it's genius. It's, it's just awesome. Pascal said that God has given human beings uh, the gift of freedom, which he calls the dignity of causality. And I like to think that God has given us the dignity of theatricality. That is the ability to, <laughs> the ability to, to say things and do things on the stage of the world that actually make a difference, right? There, why, why, why get up out of bed in the morning if what we say and do won't make a difference? But it does. And to me, you know, the Christian life is very urgent because... I meet people. <laughs> and every time I meet someone, that's that's dramatic, right? What am I going to say? What are they going to say back? How can I, in this situation, embody the mind and heart of Christ? 